Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tyron. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am very excited to tell you that VMware Fusion now officially supports Windows 11 ARM on Apple Silicon hardware. And this is quite a surprise because previous communication from VMware was that they would not offer support for Windows 11 ARM. So one of the reasons was the fact that there is no retail version of Windows ARM that you can buy. And Michael Roy, who is one of the product managers at VMware, has publicly stated that they do not support Windows due to the fact that Windows ARM cannot run on a Mac and still being compliance with Microsoft's EULA. However, for whatever reason, we now have VMware Fusion officially supporting Windows 11 ARM. And not only that, they also support virtual TPM, which is a requirement of Windows 11. They've also developed 2D graphics drivers and networking drivers. However, what is conspicuous from here is the fact that we don't have a 3D graphics acceleration yet. And the fact is that VMware Fusion is simply a tech preview and it's far, far behind a competitor like Parallels, which has a far easier way of installing Windows 11 ARM and also has much better support for 3D graphics, including DirectX 11 support. So you can play games like Control through a virtual machine on Apple Silicon hardware. Parallels have just today released the new version 18 and I'll be covering this in a future video. You can also check out my Windows Gaming on Parallels tutorial. So really the main advantage of VMware is the fact that it's completely free to use for personal use and it could potentially get more support in the future compared to something like the open source UTM which does a similar job running Windows 11. So today I'm going to show you an updated tutorial on how to get Windows 11 on running on VMware Fusion. We're also going to be testing out a couple of games on it too and seeing how they perform without any kind of 3D graphics acceleration. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing. You'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac tutorials. So what we need to do is to visit this website, which I'll leave a link to in the description in order to download the latest VMware Fusion Public Tech Preview 22H2. This is the current version at the time we're recording. So what we need to do is to scroll down to the page here. I wanna find this first entry here. And this is for the universal.dmg. This means that it contains the native ARM version as well as the x86 version as well. So what we're gonna do now is to go ahead and press the download now button here and then it's gonna go ahead and ask us to sign into our account. So if you don't have an account already, just click sign up. So all you need to do is fill out this form to create a VMware Customer Connect account. And part of the sign up process is sending an activation code, which you'll find in your email. Now that our code is authenticated, we're gonna click continue to VMware Customer Connect. And now we can go ahead and log into the account that we just created. So now that we've logged into the account, what I'm gonna do is to click on the link in the description once again. And once we're back at this link and we're logged into our account, we can go ahead and click the download now button again. And now we're gonna scroll down and accept the end user licensing agreement, press agree and then accept. And now this DMG has started its download process. So once the DMG has downloaded, we can either open it here or we can go to finder and then go to our downloads folder and then double click on VMware Fusion DMG. Once that's opened up, we've got this installer, which we're gonna double click on. And it's saying here that VMware Fusion Tech Preview is an app downloaded from the internet. We're gonna press open here to manually open it. Then we wanna type in our local Mac password. So now this installer window has come up, we're gonna press the agree button here and we're gonna press continue here. Here, we're gonna press done. Here it's asking us for permission to access accessibility features. So I'm gonna press okay here. And in the window here, I'm gonna press open system preferences. Then I'll click the padlock and then authenticate. And then I'm gonna scroll down here and then click the box of the left of VMware Fusion Tech Preview to allow accessibility features. Close this and press okay. So the next thing I'm gonna need is the Windows 11 ARM virtual disk drive. So we're gonna download that now. I'm gonna minimize this first. I wanna to go to our web browser and what I'm gonna do is leave a link to this registration page for the Windows Insider program, which is gonna allow us to download Windows 11 ARM. We're gonna click on here now. And the first thing it's gonna ask us to do is to register or to create an account which is already enrolled. So this process is completely free. I'm actually gonna create a brand new Microsoft account just for this. So now we're gonna register for the Windows Insider program. We're gonna press accept the terms of the agreement and press register now. So now that we're part of the program, we're gonna press flight now. So we're now part of the Windows Insider program and we can now download Windows 11 ARM. And all you need to do is now click on the link in the description for the actual download page for Windows Insider Preview ARM64. And then what we're gonna do is to sign in to the account that we just created. Here I'm already signed in. In. Here I'm going to click select edition and I'm going to select the beta channel version. So this in theory should be the more stable version compared to the dev channel. Then I'm going to press confirm. Here I'm going to select the product language of English and then press confirm again. And now I'm going to press download now. So this has started the download process. This is 9.7 gigabytes in size. I've noticed that the download speed of this is not necessarily that fast. So you're going to have to wait for this to complete. So now that the Windows 11 VHDX file has downloaded, what we're going to need to do is to convert this into a VM 
MDK or a virtual machine disk. That's the file format that VMware Fusion can actually read. So what we're going to do now is convert this into a VMDK file. So we're going to use a command line software called QEMU and one of the dependencies is going to be homebrew. So what we're going to do is leave a link to brew.sh in the description. And once we get to this page, we're going to copy this particular line here. So just click this button here and this line will be copied into your clipboard. Then go to the top right hand side here, go to spotlight and then type in terminal. Press return. And now we have terminal in the middle of the screen. What we're going to do is control click and press paste. And then once we press return, this is going to start the process of installing homebrew. Here we're going to type in our password. If you don't see anything, that's because terminal does not show asterisks when you're typing in a password. That's a security feature. Just type in your password and press return. And then we're going to press return again. So this is going to go ahead and download and install homebrew. If you don't have command line tools installed as well, it's going to download that as well. That's a much larger file of a few gigabytes. So just let that complete and then let homebrew install as well. So once that's complete, what we need to do is to go ahead and install QEMU. So I'm going to type in the command brew install QEMU and then press return. And this is going to download and install the software. So once this is installed, we're ready to go ahead and convert the VHDX file. So now what I'm going to do is to type in this command QEMU dash IMG space convert dash capital O space VMDK space. So it's quite important to hear that you have a space after the word VMDK, lowercase. What we're going to do is get our finder window open and then drag and drop this particular VHDX file and then put it into terminal. And that will put the entire path of the file into this command line. So after the word VHDX, we're going to ensure that there's a space and then we're going to type in a command here. So we're going to type in tilde forward slash downloads forward slash windows dot vmdk and what this command basically will do is use qemu to convert using this flag to change to a vmdk this particular file with the path and we're going to put it in our downloads folder so here we're going to press return and you can see here that windows.vmdk has been created within our downloads folder so once that's complete you'll see that the vmdk file here is the same size pretty much as the original vhdx file so now that you have the vmdk file here we're going to minimize here and we're going to go back to our vmware fusion installer so here we're going to do is select create a custom virtual machine and press continue and here we're going to select windows 11 64-bit arm press continue we're going to select uefi here not the secure boot press continue here it's forcing us to create a password for the TPM. So what we can do is auto generate the password and this is selected, which means that it's going to be remembered in the max keychain. So we can press continue. Here I'm going to click use an existing virtual disk and I'm going to select the one that we created earlier. I'm going to downloads, press OK here. And if I just maximize this, you can see that the windows.vmdk that we created is here. I'm going to allow this to make a separate copy of the virtual disk. However, you could use other options if you plan to make multiple virtual machines from this single VMDK. Click choose and press continue. Here I'm going to click customize settings and you'll see here that the virtual machine is going to be stored in the virtual machines folder under your library. I'm going to press save here. Now these settings have come up and also this screen recording accessibility window has come up too. So here I'm just going to open in system preferences and then click the padlock, authenticate and then click this button here to allow VMware Fusion to do a screen recording, press later. And also here, before we actually launch the virtual machine, we can actually configure some of the settings. So the most important one is this one called processors and memory. This is gonna dictate how many CPU cores you wanna allocate. I would suggest an even number that's less than half of your CPU cores, for example, four, and also an amount of memory which is less than half of your total RAM of your laptop. So now we can close this, and I'm gonna press the play button to launch the Windows 11 ARM setup. So now we're going to go through the install process for Windows 11 ARM. We're going to enter our country details, press yes, select our keyboard, skip second keyboard layout. And the first hiccup you're going to reach is the fact that Windows 11 ARM expects you to connect to a network. And because we don't have the network drivers installed yet, we need to bypass the screen. What we're going to do is to hold down the function key and the shift key. Then we're going to press F10. And now what that will do is open up a command line window. Now what we're going to do is to type in the command OOBE backward slash bypass NRO and then press return. And what that's going to do is to restart the virtual machine and we're not going to have that networking requirement anymore. So now we're going to go through the country and the keyboard selection again. And this time we have this new option here. I don't have internet, just select that and then continue with limited setup. I'm going to press accept. I'm going to enter our name, password, which I'll leave blank. And basically I'm going to reject all of the analytic data tracking.
So now we've loaded up and we're in Windows 11 ARM and this is a fully functional version of Windows 11. However, the first thing you're gonna notice is that we have no internet connection. That's because we need to install VMware tools. So in order to do that, we need to do a bit of prep work. We're gonna select here and then we're gonna type in PowerShell into the start menu here. I'm gonna need to click here to run as administrator. So yes here to open an administrator PowerShell window. Then we're gonna type in the command set dash execution policy space remote signed and then press return. And here it's asking us to confirm whether we want to do this to allow external scripts to be run, press Y and then press return. So here we can now close PowerShell. And then in the menu bar here, what we need to do is to click on the virtual machine here. And we need to click this item here called reinstall VMware tools. And here it's just asking us to confirm, we're gonna press install here. So now what's happened is VMware tools has been mounted as a virtual DVD. We're going to open this and then click open it in File Explorer. And down here we have the setup. So this is a Windows PowerShell script. If you double click on this, it's gonna say that a dependency has failed. What you need to do is right click and then click run with PowerShell instead. So just do that. And this is gonna run the PowerShell script. I'm gonna press yes here. So this has now installed the network driver and also the 2D graphic driver as well. So I'm just gonna press a key to close the PowerShell window. And what you're gonna see here is now we have internet access. If I go to a standard website, I'll be able to get information here. And also if I right click on the desktop, if I go to display settings, I can do things like change the display resolution. So for example here, I'll change this to 1080p, which is the size of the current window I'm recording on. And you can see it's kind of scaled in. So I can scale it like this and it still remains as 1080p within the window, or I can press this green button here to full screen it completely. So if I wanna go between the full screen window, I can use the four finger swipe to go between them on a the trackpad. Or if you wanna get the top bar to work with the mouse, what you can do is press control and command together, and then you'll be able to access that top window. So now we have the full version of Windows 11 running as a virtual machine on Apple Silicon hardware. And this is now fully capable of running many applications that aren't compatible on Macs. So I have done a little bit of game testing. I've installed the Steam client. I've also tested out a few games. And unfortunately, if you try to run a 3D game, for example, Fallout New Vegas, then you're gonna be able to enter the menu, but you won't be able to enter the game without it crashing. Similarly, I've tried the game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and unfortunately, this does not run at an acceptable frame rate. It runs very slowly, despite the fact that we're running on the lower settings at a tiny resolution. However, if you did want to play some less demanding Windows titles, for example, Fallout 2, then this one's great under VMware Fusion. If you do have any interest in high-end Windows gaming on your Mac, then Parallels is definitely going to be a better option than VMware Fusion. Here we've got the game Control running at a very decent frame rate on Apple Silicon Mac hardware. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Mac tutorial. If you found this video useful, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.